let me make things nice and sparkling clear. Michael Myers is fucking dead. D-E-A-D. -E Hi everyone and welcome to day 18 of my 31 days of horror and today I know I'm going to upset a lot of you guys simply because I've watched a film that has divided opinion ever since its release. It is a Rob Zombie film and I think you're all going to be guessing it's Halloween from 2007. However you're wrong, it's Halloween 2 from 2009. I've just finished watching this absolutely magnificent movie. Now I've thrown that word out there, magnificent, because it simply is. It's one of Rob Zombie's finest works to date. Um, okay, The Devil's Rejects and his latest movie, 31, are up there. But I honestly believe Halloween 2, Rob Zombie's re remake, or his new vision, if you will, of how the Halloween franchise should go, this is a tremendous movie. And I'll explain why straight after this trailer. Lock the place up tight. I don't want any surprises till I get there in the morning. Six guys left one stiff. That's one for the books. <laughs> Help! I'm trapped. Help me! The authorities haven't been able to produce a body. Do you think Michael's alive or dead? Will he kill again? Let me make things clear. Michael Myers is dead. D E A D. So, how are you feeling? Nightmares are chewing at my head again. They just seem to be getting worse. I've had four calls about Michael Myers today, all in the space of 10 minutes. Are you a giant? I know he's not going to come back just because it's a stupid holiday. I need you to call 911. Wait, 15 cherry. Was Is here. I know me. Who are you then? I'm Michael Myers' sister. Who's gonna kill me? It's going to be all right. It's going to be no, fine. No, no, it's not. So Halloween 2 came out in 2009. It stars Scout Taylor Compton, who reprises the role of Laurie Strode. It stars Tyler Mayne, who plays obviously Michael Myers, and it also stars Malcolm McDowell as Dr. Loomis. And there's also brief appearances of Sherry Moo Zombie, who plays Michael Myers' mother, Deborah Myers. So the movie picks up directly where the first one finished in 2007, in that we see Laurie Strode, well, she's basically walking down this road, she's covered in blood, she's just gone through all the fighting with Michael and she's seen the death of her friends and everything else, and then she gets picked up by the police. Now, we see Michael is in an ambulance, obviously they've picked his body up because Dr. Loomis shot him at the end of the first one. So, basically, everybody thinks the actual murdering spree's over. Anyway, that's far from the truth. We see Michael escape from the ambulance, when it crashes into a cow and the actual driver, one of the drivers gets killed and the surviving member, he then gets killed by Michael Myers. And then the movie basically fast forwards, if you will, I think it's a year or possibly two years after the events of the first Halloween. And we see Michael Myers and he's making his way to Haddonfield. He's become a drifter, he's got a big beard, he's scraggly looking. Some people say it looks like a scruffy Rob Zombie. I mean, I don't know if that was intended, uh, but you've seen Rob Zombie with beard and the clothes he wears. I don't mind it. I think it looks quite cool on him personally. But anyway, 
I'm diverting away from what I'm talking about. But yeah, we see Michael Myers as a bit of a drifter. Now, why do I like Halloween 2 so much? Well, one, it's got a lot better character development than what the original Halloween had. Or I should say, my, uh, Rob Zombie's original Halloween, the first one. In the first Halloween, we simply saw Michael Myers, the first hour of the film, is all about a young Michael Myers growing up to be this serial killer that we all come to, to love nowadays, basically. I know that sounds a bit sick, but you know what I mean, we all love Michael Myers. But, yeah, we see a young Michael Myers developing um, in the first hour of the film, and then the second part of the film, obviously, is in Haddonfield committing these crimes. He gets his mask, he gets his boiler suit. That is the first film. The second film, however, is more character-driven. Um, we see the transformation of Laurie Strode. She's gone through all this fighting with Michael, she's seen the death of all her friends, and now, basically, she's mentally messed up. Who wouldn't be after witnessing what she's witnessed? Um, so, basically, the film starts off, she's now in hospital, or she's having a dream that she's in hospital, and Michael's come to attack her. Now, that scene is reminiscent of the original Halloween 2 starring Jamie Lee Curtis, in that we've got the hospital, we've got the murders, blah de blah However, in the original Halloween 2, the entire film is shot in the hospital, whereas in Rob Zombie's version, only what five ten minutes of it shot in hospital and the rest of it is set around Haddonfield. Anyway, she wakes up from this dream, does um, Laurie, and then obviously she's trying to recuperate, she's staying with her friend, and she comes across a bookstore and she sees the fact that Dr. Loomis has brought a book out all about Michael Myers. She goes and buys this book. Now in this book it tells you the history of Michael and his family, and she comes across an article or a, or a paragraph which basically says that Michael Myers and Laurie Strode are brother and sister. So she thinks, well, everybody's lied to me over these years. Michael's my brother. She's going to have it out with everybody. She's going to kick off and this, that, the other, which she does throughout the film. She's always screaming. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, I think if you've been through what she's been through, you'd, you would be exactly the same. But there's a lot of character development with Laurie. We see a lot of imagery which suggests she's slowly turning a little bit mad, if you will. She's slowly entering into Michael Myers' world um, in that she's becoming emotionless. She's becoming disjointed from the real world. She's blaming everybody. Um, and, you, and it's well crafted. You know, Rob Zombie, what I will say for him, he's got such a good imagination when it comes to, you know, this, this visions, if you will, this visionary type of attitude in his films. Um, he puts a lot of thought into it. And there's also usually a lot of colour. Now, in Halloween 2, we go from dark screens, blue tones, to brilliant white screens when we see the white horse. Now, the white horse, there's a quote that I want to show on screen now, guys. Now, this quote basically appears right at the beginning of Halloween 2, and it sets the tone of the film perfectly. Now, on first viewing, you probably read it, blah, 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 and then you'll ignore it. You'll forget it was even there. So when you come to watch Halloween 2, You'll keep saying, so what the hell has the White Horse got to it all? What is all this about? It's so boring, there's nothing happening. Well, remember that quote, guys. That quote basically sums up Michael Myers and Laurie Strode. It, it, it sums them up perfectly, pretty much with every scene you see them in. Remember what it says. The White Horse appears when there's relative calm and tranquility, but basically... It's going to, we're going to have ensuing chaos and violence. Basically, that's what happens. We see Michael Myers. One minute he's in the ambulance. Everybody thinks he's dead. Then we see he comes back alive, doesn't it? When the cow, when the van hits the cow, and he, he starts his mayhem once again. Laurie Strode, she starts to have visions towards the end of the film of meeting her mother, Deborah. Again, there's all this calm around her to start with, but then she she slowly goes into the world of Michael Myers or into the mind of Michael Myers, her brother. And we see this right at the end when, basically, Michael, she's being pinned down by a young Michael Myers, if you will. Now, Dr. Loomis doesn't see this, but we see it as the viewer. And she's being pinned down by a young Michael. And it's like a love-hate relationship between Michael and Laurie. Yes, he's out to try and kill her, because I think he wants, ultimately, his mum, himself, and his sister to be one again. You know, it's all about... Michael's and his family. It's all family orientated when you think about it. And there's a lot of love in Halloween 2 when you think about it. It doesn't look like it on screen, but when you narrow it down, it's all about family relations and how he wants that close bond back again. Because don't forget, in the original Halloween, in Halloween 2007 with Rob Zombie's version, 
we see Michael caring for young Laurie when she's a baby. Um, his mum's the one who always looked after him. He always just looked up to his mum kind of thing. So he has got a, a good emotional bond with his mum and his sister. Now, as he's got older, obviously he's mentally messed up and he's going on a killing spree, but he's trying to get his, that group back together, if you will. So the White Horse, as I said, guys, you've got to watch it and it symbolises all these feelings and emotions that is going on with Michael and Laurie. Now, as for the film, we've seen the hospital scene at the beginning. We've seen the fact that Laurie has now read this book written by Dot Loomis. And that is another thing, Dot Loomis' character in Rob Zombie's version of it is turning into some kind of egocentric, look at me, I'm the main man, I've, I'm the one who's investigating Michael Myers all these years, I know all about him. And he's cashing in on Michael Myers' mythology, if you will. You know, he's cashing in on the murder spree that he went on. He's wrote a book, he's doing these grand tours. Um, it's, it's well done, I think, how Rob Zombie's done that. Because in the original Halloween, Dot Loomis is on a one-man mission to hunt Michael Myers down. He's the good guy throughout the entire franchise. He's the one who knows Michael in and out. He knows how he's going to work, where he's going to do it, blah, blah, blah. And he's the good guy. In Rob Zombie's version, it turns into a bit of a seedy, greedy, bad guy. Now, a lot of people say that he flips over the page, he turns over a new leaf, if you will, towards the end of the film. He tries to redeem himself by going into the barn and confronting Michael. Some say he's done it again, because if he survives, it's another book he can write. It's up to the viewer to decide on what you think Dr. Loomis' reasons are for going into the barn at the end of the film. However, you lot can discuss that between yourselves. But as for the film, so we see Laurie, like I said, she goes back to confront all the friends and so-called, not relations, but people who are looking after her, to find out the truth about Michael and herself, and why wasn't she told they were related. But obviously Michael's now out and about, he's back in Haddonfield and he's back to doing what he does best and that is killing anybody who is getting in his way. Don't matter who you are, he will take you out, simple as that. Uh, the, but it's just a character driven development, if you feel. it's a character driven storyline that I absolutely love with Halloween too. There's a lot of imagery in it. Now also, being a Rob Zombie fan, you either love him or hate him. I absolutely love the guy. I think his working movies is fantastic. I'm not too keen on music side of things, but I do like his movies. And when it comes to gore, Rob Zombie is the master of it. He knows just how far to push the boundaries without it going a bit over the top. And in Halloween 2, again, you've got the violence, you've got the gore, you've got the character development. You've got everything in a package, and yet people still seem to hate Halloween 2. Now, you've got to remember, guys, it's not a remake of the John Carpenter versions. It's a reboot. It's Rob Zombie's own vision of the Halloween franchise, if you will, of Michael Myers' development. As soon as you get that in your, in your heads and you can watch it for what it is, you should be able to enjoy the Rob Zombie films for what they are. So you've got the gore, you've got the violence, you've got a better storyline. So, again, I've given quite a bit away in what the film is about. Basically, to recap, it's about Laurie. It's more about Laurie, is Halloween 2, in that she's coming to terms with the fact that she's Michael Myers' sister. She's the sister of a serial killer. Um, she knows she's been hunted by him. She knows he's wiped out her family. But it's all about her coming to terms with it all. And it's all about her dealing with these visions that she's having. It's like she's got some kind of supernatural link with Michael and she can feel and see what he's feeling and seeing and vice versa. Um, so, like I said, when it gets to the end of the film, we see this link come full circle, if you will. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2, that's the movie I've watched today. Um, it's a fantastic movie. You've got to remember the white horse scenes when you watch it and not switch off, not get bored by it. You've got to remember what that is symbolising just prior to the next scenes that are going to evolve in the film. Once you've got that in your head, guys, the film makes complete sense. Well, to a point it does. But yeah, The White Horse, I know people have moaned about it and slagged it off and said it makes the film boring. It doesn't. If anything, it's got to be in there to make the film more interesting. <sighs> right, we've got that out of our system. So guys, if you've seen Halloween 2, which side of the fence were you on? Were you on the naysayers or did you like it? I, I love it. I think it's a great sequel. I really do. Um, and like I said, it's not a remake, it's a reboot of the franchise. Um, I like the drifter version of Michael Myers with the beard. 
not saying it's right because he should have a mask to me he should have a mask on but i did like the overall look of him um, i like the character development as i keep saying um, it's got your typical halloween music in the background it's got the violence it's got the gore it's got everything that you want from a halloween movie so guys what do you think if you've seen it comment down below tell me your thoughts if you haven't seen it and you don't want to see it please just give it a go just go out and give it a try and then come and let me know what you thought i mean after all you know, what what arm is lost in, in giving the actual film a go so guys comment down below tell me your thoughts and in the meantime guys tomorrow day 19 i have got another special guest on board who's going to do a quick intro I'm not going to say who it is or what film it is so you're gonna to have to watch out for that so yeah day 19 is going to come tomorrow in the meantime guys as i always say take care and look after yourselves